This is like the um, council estate version of Richard and Judy. <laughs> Hi everyone and welcome to my channel, I'm Simon of Savage Reads and today I'm joined for a Reading Horizons I knew you were going to do it, I'm so pleased you did <laughs> by my mate Kerry Hudson Hello Who you may all know from her novels which we'll talk about shortly and you'll have seen me gushing about her memoir Do you call it a memoir or non-fiction? I call it non-fiction, I mean it's, 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 it's heavily memoir but it's also it's a lot about a lot of other people's stories as well I think And also so. it's you now looking back on then, which I always think is sort of memoir, but also about now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's like it's it's being billed as a memoir, I guess, and I can totally see why because it's very personal. But I think it's as much nonfiction. It is about my own personal story. <laughs> Shameless. We're going to be doing a few videos over the next few weeks and months. So we're going to do a reading horizons now, <laughs> where we talk about what we have read, what we are reading, and what we're going to read next. And then we're going to do a video where Kerry has a route through my bookshelf, so one of my uh, Have a Nose Through My Bookshelf series. And we're also going to do a video for When Lowborn Comes Out about being lowborn. Yeah. Yeah. So, Kerry, as yes. my guest, well, actually, first of all, one thing we can talk about is how did we meet? And I know I that. I feel like after... it was in a Dodgers Soho Club, but that might have been someone no, else. That was later on. That was okay. that night where I got a text from you saying. I don't remember what happened last night, but I've got barbecue sauce on my fingers and I've lost my jacket. Literally, <laughs> literally every Saturday night though, so it doesn't matter what time it's Oh, I felt special and now I don't feel so special. Sorry. I think the reason we first met is I read Kerry's first novel. Tony Hogan bought me an ice cream float before he stole my ma. Good title. Thanks. How many times have you had to say that title? A lot. Now I just say the book with a ridiculously long title and I'll leave it at that. This one. Um, and I think I sent you an email afterwards that was a bit fan maily. Maybe, yeah. Did you? Because it really resonated with first, me. No? Oh, no, no, no. I don't think it was even then. No. Because I think I sent you an email saying how much the book chimed. And that was it. From this book, a friendship was spawned. Bloomed. It bloomed. I can't actually say what Kerry has written in this I can. dedication. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I, will, I will read you the dedication. Uh, put your earmuffs on if you're, if you're allergic to swears. My Simon Savage, my favourite hunting host and a pretty shit partner in crime. Kerry, kiss, kiss, kiss. And now look, six <laughs> years later, hosting still, and partnering in crime. Still a fabulous hunting host. <laughs> <laughs> the bleep's going to be fun on this. <laughs> what this what this did was it, it got to me, and we'll talk about this more with the low bomb video, which we'll see in due course, um, because it reminded me of so much of my childhood, which is why I wanted to write to you and say. Mm. And then we met in Liverpool, did some events together. Kerry came and stayed at a stranger's house. <laughs> <laughs> I will literally stay anywhere, you know. <laughs> and, um, and that was it. So that's what, six, six years, I think, we think? Yeah, how about that? Six yeah. years of friendship. Mm. And one of the reasons I wanted to see these videos, actually, is because people can get to know the person behind the channel through other people they know, I think. Yeah. And they might get to see a slightly different side to me, a naughty side, because Gary does bring out my naughty side. <laughs> so anyway, we thought we would talk about the books we have read, what we are reading, what we're going to read next. Kerry, yes. what have you read? The last book I read was uh, Ironopolis by Glenn James Brown. I reviewed it for The Guardian, actually. Oh, get her. <laughs> <laughs> it's a small plug, but a valuable one. Um, and um, so I already read this before, I was asked to review it actually because Glenn had contacted me and said you know our books have sort of similar themes and um, it is an extraordinary book about the life and death of a council estate in oh, wow. um, it has um, several interweaving stories and spans uh, five decades and each different story and each different thread very much has like its own voice and its own sort of narrative structure it's an extraordinary book and also I'd say considering this is his debut you would think that like because you know I think any writer would find all of that hard to pull off but he does it with such nuance and skill because he clearly put so much love into this book like he's from Middlesbrough he knows the estate he knows the people that was there and he tried to you know sort of capture the the vast humanity on that estate is it fiction or non-fiction it's fiction oh wow okay it's fiction but beautifully researched fiction as well oh, wow. so you really get an insight I cannot recommend it enough. It should have it should have won a lot of prizes, I think. Um, it's a really extraordinary book. It's published by Parthian, um, and I really, really recommend it, especially if you want to read something about working class people that isn't like they're all on, you know, they're all down getting their gyro and then getting four cans of tinnies. So recommend it. I'm gonna to have to get myself a copy of that, I think. And I'll link all the books down below, including Carrie's books as well. So very lovely. The last book that I finished is a memoir. 
and it is Tracy Thorne's Bedsit Disco Queen. Now I actually listened to this, I haven't read it, read it, but I still, I used to be a bit like that isn't the same as reading, but I genuinely think it is now. And I really enjoyed this, and I'm gonna do a small plug here, which is slightly shameless, but myself and Tracy will be doing an event at Liverpool Library on February the 25th, talking about her new memoir, Another Planet, which looks at her diaries in the late 70s and early 80s in suburbia. This, fascinatingly, is her first memoir, but actually starts where that uh, after that section of her life. So really interestingly, reading Another Planet first and then reading this, I mean, it feels like I've gone on a whole journey with her. And also with the audiobook, you get snippets of songs from the eras that she's writing about. And it just works brilliantly. But what I love about it is I was slightly worried that this would be a book where I'd be a bit alienated. Um, I'm a big fan of everything but the girl. I'm a big fan of Tracy Thorne's um, solo career. But I was a little bit like, you know how sometimes music books can be a little bit like you have to know the industry or, and I did, I did used to be a journalist who did interview pop stars for a bit. But what I love about this is it's all about what is pop, why is pop what it is, but also how her relationship and how she was expected to be a pop star, but she didn't really want to be a pop star and all those other things. And um, as well as her husband becoming really ill, her wanting to be a mum, her not really wanting to sing anymore at one point. Um, and it's just ace. Have you read anything about no, her? I would love to as well because I loved everything but the girls. So. I think we should put this out there. I think you and Tracy would do an amazing event about childhoods from very different perspectives in life, but also how they can inspire creativity in a really different way. I am. I'm into that. Tracy, if you're listening, I will meet you there. Because <laughs> if the camera starts wobbling, it's because I decided to use it as a <laughs> uh, as a uh, sniffing stick. Next. <laughs> Oh, what a bit wrong. <laughs> so, sorry, Kerry, what are you currently reading? I am currently reading Who Killed My Father by Edward Louis. I've heard he's amazing. Absolutely. I um, I know him That's a little a bit because cover. he's a French author and he's also, uh, it's fabulous, isn't it? Um, he's a working class author, so he writes primarily about his working class, lived working class experience in France. So this is his newest one coming out. Uh, also, tiny little plug, I'm in conversation with him at the London Review of Books on the 20th of February. I'll link that event down <laughs> below too. <laughs> but he is, so I know him a little bit because um, he was one of the, the really like very few authors writing about the, the working class experience in France when I also had my book out in France. You won and an so, award in France, didn't you, Carrie? I did win an award in France. I won the Prix Femina Etranger. Uh, it was very nice. I got quite a lot of canapes. So that's. Well, this is one thing that me and Kerry have in common with our friendships. We love going to parties where we can sort of. Well, actually, I was looking at some pictures of us where we're looking very naughty with a canapé and a drink, and that sort of sums <laughs> us up. <laughs> just sort of dominates, annexing the corner yeah. and just getting really stuck in. Yeah. That literally, what else is the reason? You for never know parties. when your next canapé might come. That's the thing. You've oh, got to get them while you can. Someone made that a Facebook inspirational quote. <laughs> <laughs> Unacceptable. Can edit it. Um, so Edward is. I, I genuinely think. Like I know the words like sort of voice of a generation or um, genius is like bandied about all the time. I genuinely think Edouard is like a, a real genius. Like his the the purity of his writing and his craft is exceptional. The places he goes is really really unusual for a writer to go in. They're deeply honest and unflinching, and they're also wonderful sort of. Uh, explorations of sort of this disenfranchised part of society that just doesn't have a voice. Oh, wow. Um, I really, really recommend it. It's, it's slim, but so valuable and beautiful. Um, and uh, I really recommend all of his work. And just even reading his essays or watching my interviews, he's a beautiful, brilliant mind. Well, I'm going to have to read him within the next month, I think. Yeah. And I'm going to start with the end of Eddie, I think, because that was his first, wasn't it? And actually, that links into the book that I'm reading, because this is a book that I'm reading because of the last Reading Horizons video I did with my friend Sarah Schmidt, um, and she had recently read My Year of Rest and Relaxation mm -hmm. by Atessa Moshveg, and kind of loved it, hated it, and loved it all at once. And I think it's partly because this is about a very privileged woman in New York who decides she can just take a year off <laughs> and sort of take quite a lot of drugs that make her sleep. And she wakes up every so often, sometimes she has to go and buy a coffee. Um, I'm not very far in, it's literally the beginning, but already I kind of, I can understand what Sarah was saying, I kind of love to hate her because she's got, her friend comes around who's quite clearly concerned about her and all she's sitting there thinking is, she's not as pretty as me, why are we friends? Why won't you get the hint that I just don't even like her? <laughs> um, but yet she's also slightly reliant on her. It's a really weird dynamic already. It's going to be interesting to see how Tessa kind of keeps that tension with a novel that is literally about a year of doing absolutely flap all. That's mm. quite tricky. But what I really like about her writing um, and what I really enjoyed about Eileen is she can create these incredibly unlikable but 
you cannot stop reading them kind of characters. And this seems to be happening with this one already. She likes to look at the kind of darker side of people. I also really love this cover because yeah. it's slightly provocative. You can see why. Um, but yeah, have you read any of Tessa? No, and I would love to read this. This has been like all over everyone's feeds for ages. So maybe once you finish with it. I might do. Yeah, might, might well do. I really want to read her short stories because there is something. I do think my problem with Eileen was at the end it got a little bit. I felt like it lost control. This feels very controlled, which mm. I really, really like. Um, but also I'm reading it because I think it may end up on the women's long list this year, but it's currently on the Welcome Prize long list, oh. and I love the Welcome Prize. Um, so yeah, that's the reason that I'm reading that right now. Oh. What are you going to read next, Katie? Oh, I've seen this. I'm really jealous. I am very, very excited about this one. So it's Girl, Woman, Other by Bernadine Everisto. Um, I'm so, I've talked in a video recently about my favourite books of all time and Mr Loverman, which was Bernadine's last book, was one of those books. I'm so excited about this. Um, I'll read the back for you. It says, teeming with life, crackling with energy, a love song for modern Britain and black womanhood. Bernadine Everisto can take a story from any time and turn it into something vibrating with life from no less than Ali Smith. Uh, and then from Maggie G, if you don't know her work, you should. She says things about modern Britain that no one else does. I just, oh. Um, and so I haven't even started this yet, although I can see here, am I number, is it? That's number six out of a oh, limited run. I hope it is. I hope this is number six. That would be so exciting. But um, but she is she is just an extraordinary powerhouse. You know, yeah. she does, like very quietly actually, does so much to support underrepresented writers, mm -hmm. not just from the the BAME community, but also like from the working class community. She's a huge champion of other people's work and her work is astounding. If you've ever seen her read, um, there's layers upon layers in her language. Um, I just cannot wait. Um, do get it because I'm sure it will be phenomenal. Well, I just, I, with Mr. Loveman, what I loved about it, and I got quite emotional when I was talking about it the other day, is I forgot how much I loved her characters, even when they do things that are not necessarily likable. They're, they're, they're human because we are all flawed. We're not all perfect. We're not all delightful all the time. I mean, we try, <laughs> but, <laughs> but not always. But I think what, what she does is there are no, she doesn't do villains. She just does flawed characters, which I think is mm. a really clever, subtle, yeah, I'm very, I'm very jealous and that might be stolen actually. Swapsies. Swapsies afterwards. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> a little mini book club. And the book that I'm going to read next is Six Stories and an Essay by Andrea Levy because mm. sadly Andrea Levy passed away very recently and it reminded me how I have not finished reading all of her books and yet she's an author that I always said would but I was waiting for that next novel mm. to know that I could then go back to some of the others because do you ever do that with authors where you have like certain authors where you're very excited about that next book and until you see that next book you don't feel like you can go backwards because you need to make sure you've got them to line up yeah, and that's how I felt with this so I haven't read this one yet obviously so that's why I'm going to read it um but she just her again her characters her the stories of those characters and the fact that she wrote so much about the Windrush generation is just mm. so it has it's reminded me of an author and it's really sad that that happens sometimes where an author will die and you're like <gasps> I either have to read all of their works I haven't yet, or, oh my goodness, I should really get back to the books mm. of theirs that I haven't read. Because Small Island is just a piece of genius. Yeah, yeah. And also, I was saying them on Twitter that um, she's one of the few authors that me, my mum and my gran all liked. And to get the triple savage, like, tick, the seal, seal of approval. approval. <laughs> I don't actually know what the stories are about, or the essay. Um, but yeah, I just think well. it is it's it's lovely. Beautiful. Yeah. So, yeah. So, those are our reading horizons, and a little bit... Kerry will be back soon when we will be talking about uh, some books that she's taken off my, snaffled off my shelves, and I don't know what they are, and she could be trolling me or all sorts, but that will be out soon. And um, like I said, all the books we'll talk about will be linked down below. But for now, it's bye from me. And bye from me. Bye. Bye. <laughs> oh, that was nice. That was good fun.